All right. Hello, hello again. Um, happy Friday. Have, happy Texan Day. Uh, this is in Texas. This is what we do. We wear some, you know, Texas outfit. I didn't have a cowboy hat to wear, but I said I will wear this one to, you know, to celebrate to celebrate Texan Day. Uh, I don't know exactly the history of Texas Day, but I know, I remember because they tell us to dress our kids in Texas outfit. I was like, okay, I will do it and then I will do myself. And I do believe this also is for Texas. But anyways, so happy Texan Day, happy Friday. Again, uh, even if we are happy, we are thinking of the people from Ukraine. We are praying for peace. We are praying for, for safety of uh, children and women and men. So we, our hearts and prayers are with the people of, uh, and support are with the people of Ukraine. Okay, so we, we, we are not forgetting them. We are really praying because that's what we can do and hoping that uh, those in leadership will do their job to protect innocent people. Okay, so now why today I am not going to, to give you a, a long presentation. What I'm about to, to give to you today or to discuss with you are the tips to obtain an employment authorization document or EAD card within 30 days. It's no secret for those who are, have applied for their work permit while they are waiting on their asylum or waiting for their green card or any other reason why you're applying for work permit. It is taking a long time to process. It is taking six months, eight months, a year, either if you are applying for a new card or a replacement or renewal. Uh, so how can you get your, green, your work permit expedited in 30 days? Yes, I said 30 days. And who can, who can get that green, uh, work permit expedited in 30 days? That's what I will discuss today. However, before I get there, you know, that means you have to wait a little bit for that, if you're really interested. I'm also going to discuss or to show people because uh, it has been brought to my attention that those who, let's say you get your work permit or you get your green card, you need a social security to do anything in this country. So, and some people are facing difficulty uh, knowing where to go to apply for your social security card. So I wanna also show you, I'm going to walk uh, you through the process, where to go, uh, what to do and how to apply for the social security card before and again in after that i will show you or i will discuss with you who is eligible to expedite their work permit within uh, th uh, 30 days and actually also who can how some of the asylum seekers may may be eligible for a not like a zero fee work permit application. So who is eligible, where to go, that's what I'm about to tell you right now. First, let's begin with um, the, the social security. Let me share my screen. I believe I have some of the stuff open here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is where. Let me share with you that I'm going social security number. So when you apply for social security or when you obtain your green card uh, or your work permit, that's not the last step. You have to get a social security number to be able to apply for a job, to be able to apply for a driver's license, to be able to apply for later social security benefits, to be able to go to school. You need this social security number. So how do you apply for social security number? So back before COVID, you just had to work in an office. I remember back in the day when I, I arrived in the US with my green card, the, 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 thing, the first thing to do, you know, I arrived on weekend, of course the weekend they are closed, but the Monday of that weekend, you know, I went to the, the social, we drove to the social security uh, uh, office, Somewhere it was a long drive, but in each city you have offices depending on where you live. 
However, right now, after COVID, that's not the case. So what, and, and so what you need to do, and when it's your new, your very first application of your social security uh, card, you cannot do it online. You have to go in, in person. So, so how do you do that to get a new um, social? You have to call your social security office. How do you, do you know that? You go on this website and you put in your zip code. I hope you can see very well. You know, let's put 770042, uh, for example. And then you, you click on locate your op office. So, and then it shows you, here's the office, and it shows you, um, so it, it shows you the number. So you have to call this number. You cannot show up in person right now. Although, uh, speaking to my clients, uh, depending on where they live, they may allow you to, to go in, to drop in. Some of the offices are having one day, uh, one day they allow people to, to come in, but they are not advertising it because you may go that day if you are lucky. It's the, the working day, but they are not advertising what are the working days. So as you see here, I just put the zip code 77042 is here in Houston. And it shows me where, what is the office, 10703 Stan Cliff Road in Houston. And they give me the number. So what people are facing, you may call this number and ring, ring, nobody answers. So what, what can you do? Um, so, and then, so you can, you can try to keep calling until you reach someone and they will schedule you for your social security appointment. Okay, so yeah, as you see here, it shows uh, on Tuesday, March 17, 2020, we suspended face-to-face -face service to, to the public in our, in our field offices and hearings offices nationwide until, until further notice. Okay, so if you, you need to call this number, and I always tell people, if you need to call any government agency, you better wake up at 7 a.m. Well, they open at 9 a.m. here. So be the first one to call at 9 a.m. You you reach somebody. Uh, so also you can go also online if you are not able to do that, and then you can log sign. You get you can create an account. You can create a social security account, and and after that you can schedule an appointment through your online account. So you can you can uh, schedule online. Okay. And then with that, you can also check the status of your application and you can use it to, your account can be used for so many other benefits that the social security uh, services provides. So basically this is how you, you apply for your social security. It may take time right now because they are not accepting walk-ins. So you have to call, you have to keep calling. And then you can also go and create an account and you may be able to schedule an appointment through your online account. Maybe that's something that's better than keep calling and nobody answering, okay? All right, so that's, that's it for the social security. Now, uh, uh, today I don't wanna spend that much time on, 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 on here, you know? So I just wanna be quick and, and uh, concise. So then that's the social security uh, problem of issue, how you can resolve it. Now, let me show you, let's talk about the, uh, let's talk about how to expedite your requests, right? As I spoke, I, I said uh, in the beginning, uh, they are every work, maybe let me show you the processing times to tell you what I'm talking about. And then you're gonna get back home. Okay, let me open this one. Let me open another, uh, so I don't want to lose that one. CIS.gov. Okay, and it's going to take me to tools. So I want to show people how long it's taking for USCIS to process employment authorization document applications or EADs or work permit like we 
commonly call those documents. So let me go to processing times. Okay, so the work permit is applied on form I-765. Uh, 65. Okay. It, it's, most of them are in Texas Service Center. So let's just pick te Texas Service Center and I'll show you. And it doesn't matter which category of, uh, of your application, but let me just sh show you. Let's say you are applying based on, on um, uh, what, what, what they call adjustment of status, right? C9. It is taking between 11.5 to 13.5 months. So basically they are processing cases filed in January. And that is the accurate because we still have cases that we filed in March, in April of 2021. We have not received the work permit. Either be a new uh, initial work permit or a renewal of a work permit. And also the other common cases are the uh, asylum, based on pending asylum, July 9th to 2021. It's taking about eight months to get the work permit. Um, and then you can see all of them really, I, either, either category is taking average eight months, six months, like all of them are pending for a long time. So, but that, what does that mean? That it means that while, say you have an asylum pending, uh, and also we get to that one in a minute, for asylum is very, there are other particularities that I wanna discuss about. It means if you, when you have a pending work permit, or a pending asylum case, you have a pending uh, green card adjustment of status, uh, which you know they're all taking a long time you, you you normally will be allowed to work within like it used to be seven five days you'll be able to get a work permit so you can start working while you're waiting for the government to process your green card or to process your asylum to process your uh, your other type of visa or to renew based on other you know if you are dependent of on a one a dependent of h one b or a dependent of or a TPS uh, uh, applicant or TPS holder, DACA. There are so many categories that they, you, you know, we need to work. People need to work because all these applications, even to fight for all these applications, you have to, to get the money. You have to pay money for the, the attorneys. You have to pay the filing fees. So people need to work, right? So, but however, though, it's taking as long. So actually, to be honest, I've had a case being granted uh, for, for a green card before the work permit was approved. So and that should not be the case. You should get your work permit, start working, and then you, you'll be waiting for your green card or your other benefit. So now, so what do we do if that's the case and you um, really cannot wait for 10 months, you cannot wait for 12 months, what can you do to expedite your EAD? What can you do to expedite your work permit? Okay, so in general, USCIS may consider um, case by case. So, you know, usually the reasons they approve is a humanitarian reason, medical reason that may be approved. Financial hardship, financial loss, I, it's not working anymore. It used to work. Like, for example, if you were a student and you needed to continue or to study, otherwise you lose your credits or you were like, an, an, a, a, you know, you needed to take an exam or you really, you were working and you, they need you to continue um, and you show how much financial loss is going to cost to the gov to the company or to yourself they will allow you to expedite. However, since now, all applications for, work, for a work permit are taking a long time, they are receiving so many, like a overwhelming number of expedite requests, which means they are refusing most of them. So now, what is the secret or who qualifies? Like other than just, okay, the general. So now, there is a, uh, so the US, the, 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 
the government, the USCIS or DHS or the, the White House has recently issued a, a, like a policy which, which will allow uh, for those who have pending renewal work permit applications. Because like I said, when you get a work permit, it is granted for a year, it's granted for, for two, year, or two years. So number one, they, are, they say, okay, since now we are taking long to process your application, instead of providing a one-year validity of work permit, we will provide two-year validity of work permit. But I have to tell you, this is not consistent because um, we are receiving some approvals for one year and, and most approvals for two years. So that's one of the mitigation, I guess, mitigating uh, um, solution they provided. Uh, however, now, if you are applying for renewal and you are an essential worker, you are a nurse, you are a, you work, you know, essential worker is more than being a nurse. There's a list of, uh, there's a list of uh, uh, essential workers, uh, I believe that, you know, including uh, nurses, including everybody who works in the medical field, those who works at the airport, those who works who work in hospitality, those who work in um, in any service that can was qualified as essential worker during COVID, they are eligible to apply for the expedite request. So how do you do that? What you do, you have to go to call USCIS. You have to go to to the Okay, here it is. Okay, okay. Here's what. So you have a pending employment authorization EAD. Yes. Um, and your and your EAD has expired or will expire, right? So typically, if you had you had an EAD or work permit, we call it EAD, and, and it expires, though they issue a receipt notice. The receipt notice it expands your 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 card for another 180 days. However, the issues is has been that the employers they are not understanding that. So people are being laid off because even if they have a document which says your work permit it extend it is extended for 180 days, they don't, they are not understanding because they don't see a card. They don't see it. You know, like you need to have a card with a validity period. Now you're giving me a, a piece of paper which says oh a, a small paragraph says that oh. You can um, you can you can continue working with 180 days. So some of them are not understanding, and a lot of people are being laid off. So that's very unfortunate. And I will tell you, if you are not among the the essential workers, and by the way, here is the list of essential workers. If you go to the USCIS, you will see who are essential workers. Uh, it's coming up. It's a long list of people. So you can find your yourself here right so it's a lot of it's, it's, you can see okay all of this so it's yeah basically if during covid you need have to stop working you have to go to, to the work so healthcare, uh public health law enforcement um first education food like i said if you work in the food industry agriculture uh okay let me keep going yeah you can the list goes on goes on so you are eligible so actually this i've tried this don't think this is just to, okay yeah they put this policy and you cannot uh, apply it so i did help one of the, um one of the, the clients she had a work permit pending she is a nurse assistant and she was being asked uh, called you know she needed to take the nursing uh, exam like you know to pass the nursing exam and they ask for uh, something they couldn't take the paper that says her, her EAD has it is it, it's being a, a, a extended so we did call USCIS and did, they did approve within a month she got her work permit so it's working if you are an essential worker but this is for those who already had a, a EAD so what if you have an EAD no you don't have an EAD this is your initial application Again, you can try to call, you know, I've tried to call, I've tried to call for one of my clients who, uh, this is her first EAD, they refused. And then I will show you what other options you have if USCIS does refuse you. 
okay? So now I want to talk particularly for asylum seekers, right? People who apply for asylum, who you are applying for AED based on asylum. How can you get your, because it was the law, it was the rule, no, it wasn't the law. It was the rule that someone who's applying for asylum, once they apply for the work permit, they have to be approved within 30 days. But that also has gone through, I don't know, through the cracks. With, with all, everything that has changed, that's no longer the case. So what happened? So in the last administration, they changed things around as we are aware. One of the policies that were changed was that asylum seekers, instead of after, so once you file your asylum application, you usually have to, you usually use to uh, count 150 days. That's mean five months after your application has been received by USCIS, if you haven't been called for an interview, then you are eligible to apply for a work permit uh, free of charge and the government must approve your, your, asylum, your work permit within 30 days of applying. Basically, within 180 days of applying for asylum, you will have your, your, your work permit in your hand. So, but then, you know, the Trump administration came and they changed that, the rule to one year. They changed the rule to one year. This meaning you have to wait one year after applying for asylum. If the, after one year you haven't received your interview, you haven't received a decision on your asylum application, then you can file for, for your work permit. And the government has no obligation to approve your work permit within 30 days. So what ended up happen, happening was people, uh, and still people are, people who don't know what I'm about to tell you right now, still are waiting, waiting to apply for their work permit a long time, and they are waiting for like two years to get a work permit after they apply for asylum. <clears throat> and in addition, uh, they added a fee, a biometrics fee of $85. So first they added a, a fee, a filing fee, but there was a, a legal action which um, removed the fee and then maintained the $85 uh, biometrics, which for an asylum seeker, it's a lot of money, 85, you don't have a job, you are fleeing, it's a lot of money, okay? So now what happened then? Huh. Then the two organization, non-profit organizations, one of which I'm gonna spend much time because it's, it's more relevant to what I'm about to say, uh, to, 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 to say, Asylum Seeker Ad Advocacy Project, which we call ASAP or ASAP, however you call it, won a case against the government. I think it's ASAP V Wolf or whoever was the DHS uh, secretary. And this asylum uh, seeker advocacy project for its members, they won a case which uh, they, or they reached a settlement, or I think they, it was a, actually they actually won, which is, means if you are a member of ASAP or ASAP, you when you file for your work permit and you provide membership, USCIS ma first of all you don't pay the, the eighty five dollars filing uh, biometrics fee; it's zero application fee. And USCI, and you don't have to wait one year to file for your work permit. You, you only wait five months. And once you file, USCIS must approve you within 30 days. So this being a member of ASAP brings you back to the, to the prior policy, which guarantees you, like after applying for your asylum, if the government hasn't replied to you, has a schedule for interview, even after they schedule for an interview, they haven't provided a decision or referred you to court, you will be eligible to work or you have your work permit within um, six months of filing your uh, asylum application. So how do you become an a ASAP member or ASAP, ASAP, or, you know? So if everyone, that's why I'm focusing on ASAP, um, 
ASAP, ASAP. <laughs> That's why I'm focusing on it. Everyone can be a member of ASAP. So there's another nonprofit organization, but you know, uh, to be a member, you have to be in the, I guess, in, ge in geographical uh, areas that that uh, organization covers. But for ASAP, everyone can be a member. So what does that mean to you? And that's what I tell people. Like sometimes, uh, you know, you, you have your own asylum case, so you do your own thing and you don't consult an attorney. And then you, you just, you know, you miss out so many things because we know a lot of things that it's not in the, main, in the mainstream news or whatever who helps you, we help you with. So anyone, to, for me, anyone that I file for asylum, as, as soon as you file your asylum case and you get your receipt number or receipt notice, I send you to ASAP. I give you this link. It, membership is free. You, you, I send you this link, uh, asylumadvocacy.org uh, forward slash membership members or forward slash. And you, you go here and then you become um, a member so how do you do so that's why i have this this link here with you let me remove this thing i have this link see asylum and then you you click on become a member okay yeah so it's now hey i hope you guys are following and it's not boring hey it may be boring but it's useful so now it allows you to, to, to choose whether I speak Spanish or English because here in the US, more, a lot of people speak uh, Spanish. So, but it's easy. So then you fill out your name, your last name, your date of birth, your cell phone number, and then you show them. So they ask you, have you submitted your asylum application? Yes. Uh, do you have a case or with immigration court? Yes. So either you have a case with immigration court or you have applied for asylum. What is your A number? ADN number, everybody who has a case in immigration, they know their A number because that's the only number like they, you know, that almost actually you may forget everything else, but don't forget your A number. If you don't know it, ask your, uh, your attorney or your read it on your notice and if notice has a number and then you you ask uh you check on whatever they want you to check and they ask you what's your language country of origin uh, where you live and um okay so and they ask you all these other questions and then you just have to answer and then you submit once you submit automatically they send you a card the card is gonna have this, this uh, you know, logo, this image of uh, someone, you know, with, the, with their kid, I guess that shows their for advocacy for asylum seekers. And it has gonna have your name and the number. So when, so then, and then you send it to me if I'm your attorney or to you, you keep it. And then you, you just need to, it's, then it's, it's, it's a matter of time once, Actually, before you hit the 150 mark, 150 days mark of uh, since you your application was filed, meaning was received for, by USCIS, I mean your asylum application was received by USCIS, then you send in your application for work permit. You have to be very care, uh, very careful how you put in your you know you have to maybe put a uh, like. Uh, like a, a supporting document or, or submittal page which say a ASAP member you put in your membership you print out the the lawsuit that you know ASAP one which saved each members then you have to so, say not applicable the 85 by 85 dollars biometric fee not applicable to you and I'm a member of ASAP eligible to apply for asylum within 150 days and I should get my asylum uh, approved within 30 days. So also, let's say you have, you didn't do all of this and then you fight for, for your application. I have been able to help people get membership ASAP, most of them, especially, and that's other thing, something else I wanna talk to you guys. 
whenever you apply for um, work permit, they usually issue a uh, like a, a notice with the online account number. I advise everyone because the USCIS wants to have everything uh, uh, on. Um, they want to have everything online like to have access online uh online access so if you receive that please go ahead and create your account so you can have your notification online so my experience has been if you have an online account and you be even if you have you you, you fight for your work permit and you became a member of asap later and you have an online account i can go in and enter my appearance and ask for your member for you and show your membership on, on, on ASAP and they will expedite that your work permit. However, if you don't have online account, then it may take longer. It may say, oh, no, you don't qualify. They may not give you your work permit after the fact, you know? So basically take, a, take away is to expedite your work permit for 30 days. How does it work? You either have to be have a humanitarian reason, financial loss, and that one is case by case. Or you are a social or healthcare worker or essential worker who's applying for a renewal of the EAD and the EAD has expired and it has been 30 days. Then you get to call USCIS and they will issue you a EAD within 30 days. Or you are an asylum seeker and you you become a member of ASAP and then you get to file for your work permit when it's, it, it's time to file for your work permit and USCIS must process and is processing those within 30 days. Now, what if you fall out of those categories and then, but you really need advocacy to get your work permit approved? What do you do? That's what I say. Once you have tried to expedite, USCIS said no. USCIS also has ombudsman, and the ombudsman says no. Then I send you here. I say go to your US. Um, uh, you find your representative. Did you know that? Uh, okay, not my address. How do I? Give me one moment. So did you know that uh, US Congress has oversight, uh, okay, here we go. has oversight, uh, ob um, as, uh, what is it, uh, oversight, uh, I guess, uh, oversight assignment um, in their, um, I guess, gosh, I, I can't talk. So USCIS checks, the government, the executive, no, no, USCIS. The US Congress checks the USCIS. So the US Congress has oversight of the, of the executive branch in their mission, okay? So that means if you have reached out to USCIS, you have exhausted all the options. So you have to reach out, you have to wait for them to answer to you. You may even uh, uh, try to reach ombudsman, or sometimes we even reach the civil rights, DHS civil rights um, uh, compliance um, branch. And if that didn't work, then you remember you have a US congressman or US congresswoman or US representative. Uh, I'm, I'm here saying US, which means it's not a state representative. It is the United States House of, of Representatives, meaning those we, 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 not we, like, I mean, if you are not a citizen, you don't vote for them, but they are still representing you. You are their constituents, right? And they, so let's put again 77042 is a zip code. I'm just, you know, picking a zip code. And then you choose, I, I have my, my particular uh, preference, so, um, but all of all of them really don't even think of because this uh, this congress representative is a member of uh, of this party so they're not going to help me they are helping they have been helping and this is what i can attest to you 
they choose a congressman R. Green. You go to their to their website. They have a website. When you go there, it shows you how we serve you. So again, a Congress representative is there to serve their constituents. And you don't have to be a citizen for them to serve you, right? Because again, we pay taxes, even if we are not, well, I am a citizen. Even if you're not a citizen, you pay taxes. So you are a member of the community. So now, here's how they serve you. And then you, you have to read, okay, how can they serve me? Help with a federal agency. You click here and you choose which one, right? Uh, if it's USCIS, it's, even the social security, for those who are not a bit, have not been able to, to get a social security uh, appointment, to, uh, an appointment with a social security card, they can go to their congressman and say, I have been able to get a, uh, to, I have not been able to reach the social security office in my area. How can I, can you help me? Because I need a social, right? But right now we are talking about USCIS, you see? For all USCIS related issues, you click here. It's already there because people are calling Congress, most Congress uh, uh, representative have already created a, a space in their, in their website for USCIS inquiries. You see, USCIS inquiries. So you go, have to go, and I will tell you, even if you have an attorney, most Congress uh, representative do not uh, uh, like that an attorney reach out to them, right? They don't like that. They like you, their constituents to go. So what your attorney could do, they will guide you to fill out this form, which is pretty simple. It's, uh, it's your name, your address, your city, date of birth, everything. And then you have to explain. And maybe here, that's where the attorney will be able to provide you the language that, okay, here's how you're gonna explain. Here are the steps you have taken. Here's what I need. And then you will attach, you will attach the, and then you, you have to say, what, are, what do you want? What are you seeking? So here, I need, here you're gonna say, since we are talking about the expedite of your green card, here you will say, I need my, my no, no, your work permit. Sorry, I tend to confuse. The expedite, although you can also seek their, their, their help to expedite your green card as well. That's also possible. But now we are sticking to the EAD or work permit. Seeking expedite of my EAD. Okay, so then you have to sign. And some of them, they allow you to, to, um, to email or you can just, you can take in, in person there. Like for this is our green. So again, you have to put in your zip code. And sometimes you have two representatives, then you're gonna to have to put in your address to know who exactly is your representative. But if you reach, say you reach the other one, Liz Fletcher, she will let you know, oh, your representative is our green. Oh, he will let you know, your representative is our green. Oh, Liz Fletcher. So once you sign, and I tell you this, and you send to them, someone is gonna contact you. Not the congressman, of course, or the congresswoman, but someone in his office, someone in her office will really contact you. They are very, and I can say for Congress, congressmen agreeing, their office is amazing. They will fight for you until you get to expedited request. So people, don't, don't be afraid. Like if you don't have any other option and you really need your work permit, and you need, you need your social security number, then reach out to your congressman or congresswoman, the United States Congress representative in your area. They will help you regardless of a party uh, affiliation. They are helping, they have been helping us way more than USCIS. So now, <coughs> excuse me. Ooh, I've been talking. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm going to just summarize what I just said, really. Uh, today, I wanted to come here and provide practical, okay, not show my stuff, uh, but to show practical tips, how to, where to go, and how to, to, to help you get, expedite your work permit within 30 days. And for those who have been granted the work permit, but now they are facing issues with social security office, how can we 
uh, help them get their social security, get an appointment because you need an appointment. So, and you know, it's city by city. So, and let me tell you this, you are not, if you cannot get your social security by, by putting your zip code, try to put another, another zip code. Maybe downtown Houston uh, office is open and they have more walk-ins as opposed to maybe, maybe somewhere Southwest or Northeast or, you know, so try all the offices because it's not linked to your zip code as long as you get your social. Okay. All right. So that's what I wanted to do, talk to you today. No PowerPoint presentations to just provide answers to the questions I have been receiving. And I hope you were able to get uh, uh, some information. Uh, please feel free to share and to like and to comment and to give me some, you know, some feedback because I would like to have some feedback from you. Or oh, what else do you want me to show you? step by step what to do um also put that in the comments all right so thank you and have a, a blessed weekend and uh, stay safe bye okay i'm gonna stop recording